Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. I hope everybody stay dry today um, and warm. So thank you for joining me today. We're gonna go over a brief overview. Oh, let's see, that's the next page. Hold on while I figure out how to do this. <laughs> okay, make sure you fill out that Q&A box while you're waiting for me to get started. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do um, highlights from the fall info meeting. Um, I'm gonna go over questions that we got from the field. We're gonna do suggestions from the fall meeting. So if you guys think of anything along the way, make sure you put it in the Q&A box. Um, hot topics and reminders. And I got a challenge for you at the end. Aren't you excited? So additional funding sources. So we went over some of the additional funding that's going to come in to us and, and to you um, and what we have to look forward to. Um, so I wanted you to be aware so that you could be think, put your thinking caps on. SCA funds. SCA funds, you received one round. Um, you are going to hit get another round. Um, and they have announced that there will be a third round of SEA funding coming out. I want you guys to start tracking from the beginning of the year so that we can make sure that these funds get spent as soon as possible. Ideally, we really want to see them spent by next September, um, but that's not a hard, fast date. So, but if you guys can really work on documenting the spending of those funds so that we don't have to worry about that at the end. The second round will be about the size of the first, um, and then the third round will be a little less. PEBT, um, so local level funding is probably just came out because we've got a few questions here in the office um, just in the past couple of days. So I think that the local level funding um, for last year has gone out. Um, and you will receive admin funds for that. I think it was $628 for every school. Um, so you'll see some of those admin funds come in. Make sure you keep an eye out. Um, don't let somebody else deposit those funds for you. It's local admin funds for your department for helping with the allocation of those funds. Equipment assistance grants, I believe were announced. Uh, Michelle was able, Michelle got extra money this year, um, so she was able to award all of the people that applied for equipment grants this year. How exciting is that? So proud of everybody. Um, really excited to see what is going to come into your schools. Um, so she did want me to mention um, Priority is always given to those schools that are over 50% prayer reduced, as well as schools that haven't received the equipment grant in the past. Um, so since everybody's been funded this year, be pretty much a clean slate next year. So really think about if you want to have um, some equipment assistance grants. SYP 23 EBT will be coming. They are working on a plan for that. Um, so we'll see that money coming in um, for the summer. The department has applied for and has received a farm to school grant. Um, we are going to use this grant over the next four years to help develop regional trainings for local foods. And you'll see more of that come from um, Stephanie and Robin um, as they work on that grant. If you have somebody that's active in your regional, we're gonna do it by superintendent regions. 
if you have somebody that's really active in local foods in your superintendent region, um, please send us over their name um, and a contact. Um, we might be able to use them and um, hire them for some of the time um, during this period. So it's really a way that we're going to try and use this money to coordinate the um, regional areas with the farmers in your area. And then with somebody who can help you in the kitchen, who might be able to develop recipes that you can use. And then we have the Healthy Schools Meal Initiative coming. So they this is has just been sent out as an RFP for a, a new uh, company to take on this initiative. So the Department of um, uh, NSLP um, has, is looking for somebody outside the agency to oversee this. So there's going to be four distinct parts of this Healthy School Meals Initiative. So first is the Healthy Meals Initiative Recognition Awards, um, something like the, the last one we did. Can't think of the name of it. Um, so this is going to be to award schools who have made significant improvements to their programs, um, and then awardees will be shared and recognized, um, going above and beyond the regulations at this point in time. There is gonna be a second part of this initiative that is going to target small and rural school authorities, and they're gonna offer grants of up to 150 grand uh, per grant um, for those small and rural schools. So my first question was, so what is small and what is rural? So small is anything less than 5,000 um, enrollment. So that's the majority of the state of Maine. So everybody would get to participate with a few exceptions. Um, sorry, Lewiston and Portland. And then rural it needs to be 25 miles outside of Portland, Lewiston, and Bangor. Um, so that, don't qu quote me on those, but that's a general idea. So if you guys want to really think about what kind of grant you would like, if it's something that you want to do about equipment, um, there might be a lot of money coming if you can do those grants. Um, there is a food systems transformation challenge which is really exciting it would give um, someone um, some money to work with industry partners to develop creative solutions to provide nutritious food for school meals so this is like looking at like food hubs or um, distribution programs or um, processors to get local foods into schools so something really exciting um, that would help us use more local foods. And then they're going to offer a couple of Healthy Meals Summits to recognize the people that won um, during the Healthy Meals Initiatives and the Food Systems Transformation. So it's all really, really exciting. Um, they are going to start next school year. So it's something really, really think about, um, really put your thinking caps on, talk to your friends and neighbors, see what everybody's doing. Um, and we'll work together to try and participate in this. This was a pretty new Thursday update. Um, we, I, you know, I say we, but I mean Paula. Um, we've revamped that Thursday update. <laughs> um, we're going to try and hold most of the communication to come out on that Thursday update and try and limit the amount of things that come out on the listserv from us. Um, so you'll see a more in-depth Thursday update um, and it will look something similar to this. So it looks really exciting. Thank you, Paula, for doing this. Um, and the listserv will be for you guys to communicate and really anything that's time sensitive that we don't really think can wait till the following Thursday. All right, so exciting and new, something different in your mailboxes every week. 
So we wanted to go over best practices for fresh fruit and vegetable and after school snack. We, as we've gotten back after the pandemic, we really wanted to make sure that we reiterated the importance of the serving methods for fresh fruit and vegetables program, making sure that those are outside of the meal periods. Please use your social media and your website, as well as posters to get the word out about what you're serving in fresh fruit and vegetable, um, and that you are able to use some of that money that you are awarded, I believe it's 10% in your budget, um, in order to purchase equipment that would, might be for fresh fruit and vegetable. Um, there was also talk about um, using Cisco. Um, Cisco has created a menu um, that they have shared with people for items that um, are new and different or might be something that you haven't served before in your fresh fruit and vegetable program. So if you want to get in touch with them, um, it's a great way to get some new and different things into your program. A few reminders about after school snack. Um, you have to be over 50% to participate in after school snack for free. Um, you are able to participate when you're not over 50%, but um, your, your reimbursement is different. So I think it's eight cents um, for free for paid kids, 90 something some cents for free. So just take that into, into mind. Remember that this is two components of the meal program and students need to take two in order for it to be reimbursable. And your training, accountability and monitoring is gonna be super important with after school snack. We know that a lot of times the after school snack um, is monitor is done in the schools, it, it's not really your staff, but it's really important to make sure that you monitor that um, and keep them accountable for the, the meals that you're serving in that program. Um, and a quick reminder that a fruit component needs to be, if it's juice, it needs to be six ounces. Um, if it's a fruit or vegetable, it needs to be three quarters of a cup. So just a reminder that it's a larger portion than we used to. Okay, everybody good? The 2023 20, Farm to School Cook-Off is fun and unique, um, and a new, new, uh, unique opportunity to engage both staff um, and students. And this year, it's we're gonna do it again. It's really exciting um, and it's a lot of fun. And this year's local ingredients, I don't think I'm supposed to be telling you, but it's oatmeal for breakfast and carrots for lunch. Shh, don't get me in trouble. Copies of the cookbook are available on the website. Um, we just printed the new cookbook, so it's really great. The graphics are awesome um, and it's really fun. So check it out for some new items for your menu. This was last year's team. I wanna congratulate everybody that participated. Um, and the team from Lewiston were the champions. So round of applause for all of them, yay. Um, thank you all for participating. Um, and we wanna get a big group this year. We're looking for sites across the state. Um, so if anybody is really interested um, and knows a good kitchen site, um, that might be good in their area so that we can branch out to other areas within Maine. Um, we would love to see it. Put it in the Q&A box. Okay, breakfast after the bell. Kate really went into a lot of detail about breakfast after the bell because this is your, the first year that we are really going to check and um, see what's going on with breakfast after the bell. So in CNP web, you reported in this section um, what time your school day starts, what time breakfast starts, what time breakfast ends, and what type of serving you're gonna you're doing for breakfast. Um, and from this information, um, Kate is gonna look at 
the after the bell components um, and make sure that everybody is following 359, which says if you're over 50% that you're doing breakfast after the bell. So that means that in addition to breakfast in the calf, you're doing breakfast somewhere else or that breakfast is offered at least two different serving periods um, in the morning. Um, so really think about if you're doing that um, and make sure that you are so that she can check you off on that list. Um, alternate breakfast models include, you know, grab and go at the front door, breakfast in the classroom, bringing breakfast up to the hallways. Um, and if you, if you as a district um, are not participating, make sure you're doing your opt out. Um, she also wanted to make sure that everybody knew that there was still money in that breakfast grant. So she has money in there if people are looking for new breakfast cards or if you need a POS or you need a new tablet in order to do your breakfast in the hallway. Um, accountability is gonna be really important. You don't want to be able to let kids have more than one breakfast. Um, so if you need that tablet in order to do that, be sure to reach out to Kate um, and apply for that grant. I heard she's not being very fussy, so you might be in luck. CACFP also um, has LD 577. Um, so if districts are over 50%, um, they need to offer a after school at risk program. Um, so make sure that you're looking into that if you're not already participating. Um, it's a great way to increase your reimbursement. Um, after school snack is only a dollar or so um, in reimbursement, but you can get up to $4 for um, an after school at risk supper. So really think about if that's going to work for your district. Um, and if it's not, make sure you opt out of that program. And she, Alyssa, um, was able to share a quick guide, that's the wrong way, Jane, about starting an after school program. Um, step one is to email the school, email us, um, and then watch the webinar 101. Send CACFP your required documents to set up CMP web, but you should all be set up in there so you can skip set step three. Um, complete your online agreement is step four. And then once you're approved, um, you can get started. You can't get reimbursed until you're approved. So um, make sure that you do that in a timely manner um, and get that done. The application is wicked easy now. It's not like the old way. Um, and it's a great way to serve your kids after school, um, especially if they're going into um, sports. But you need to have an open site, a site that's available to all um, in order to be an anchor program in your school. But you can reach out to CACFP staff um, if you have any further questions about that. Whole bunch of stuff going on in farm and seed to school. Uh, really active year last year. Um, Robin was all over the place. Um, but kudos to you guys. Um, spent uh, $375,000 in local foods last year. Yay! You guys did great. Harvest of the month. Um, fishermen feeding Mainers. Farm and Sea to School Institute, all sorts of videos online. Um, and Robin even had a Wabanaki Foods in and she has a spring um, foods guide um, that she did some cooking in the kitchen here. Um, so you can check out those videos. I really encourage you to participate in Harvest of the Month. There's a ton of posters up here and stickers, we got lots of stickers um, to send out. Um, really, it's a great way to 
to get your foot in the door with harvest with local foods if you haven't already started. Fisherman Feeding Mainers has been a great program to bring food into the schools. Um, Robin again has some great recipes on the website. Check them out. Um, schools just need to go pick up their fish in Portland, but other than that, it's free of charge. So it's a good way to try it. Try a little bit with your kids, give them some fish tacos, spice it up, um, and try and get some fish into those older kids. Um, it's local, it's fresh, it's right off the dock, and it's really good. Farm and Cedar School did their first institute this year. There was three groups, three districts that went and participated, really looking for funding to continue that institute next year, um, and we're really excited. Make sure you check out the videos on the website. So this is some of the data that Robin put together. I know everybody wants data, 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 right? So, but at least Robin did something with it. And from your receipts, she was able to say that 57% of the food that you purchased came directly from a farm. Yay. She was really worried that a lot of it would go to the distributor. Um, because it's just easier, but it really goes to show that, you know, you guys really stuck to it and really bought from those local farmers. So thank you so much. And then what did the schools purchase? Apples was the biggie. That was the low hanging fruit. Um, so you guys did a lot of purchasing in apples and then a lot of purchasing with protein. It's kind of like where, you know, the expensive stuff is, right? Um, or your cows, as Melanie has bought. Um, but also potatoes, tomatoes, root vegetables, value-added dairy were your next category. And then winter squash, blueberries, other fruits and vegetables, squash, brassicas, leafy greens. So really a, a great variety. Um, really great that, you know, Local Food Fund has given back $125,000 to you guys. I'm really happy to see um, the stuff that you've purchased and looking forward to how we can grow local foods in schools this year. This is one of the signs Maine farmers love supporting Maine schools, and they really do. They really want to see their food in Maine schools feeding their kids. I wanted to introduce you to Megan. Megan Haas is joining our team as a contractor um, for the spring, and she's going to help us with special provision to validation. Um, sites that are not having a review this year um, will need to get validated um, for their applications. Um, it's really it's really great that we have Megan here to do this because it really helps you too because we're really looking so that we don't have a mistake in an application and then three years down the road we find that you know we have to take money away um, all the way back three years so Megan is here to help us to make sure that all the applications are correct and that you're ready to move forward um, so if you don't have a reviewer coming to visit you might have Megan come to visit if she can't do it um, over the phone or virtually. So some of the requests from the meeting, um, we had somebody request that um, they're having a lot more allergies come up because of the no charge meals in Maine, um, that a lot more families are participating and kids with allergies are participating. So there's been a lot more requests um, about foods or especially dietary guidelines. So we have a request um, to do some sort of a roundtable discussion training on allergies. And the other request was some, for some grant writing training um, since all this money seems to be coming in and everybody is wanting us to write grants or you to write grants. So um, Full Plates Full Potential did volunteer um, that they might be able to help us bring somebody from the outside or from their team 
in to help us with some grant writing training. So we'll be looking at trying to plan a couple of those trainings within the next year and get us all ready. If you have any more requests, please put them in the Q&A box. We did get a, re a request about recipe sharing. Um, how can you best share your recipes? Um, we'll be looking for those um, that maybe we can add to the Thursday update. So if you have a really great recipe or a website that you use for recipes that you really like, that the recipes are all credited, um, it would be great if you could share those um, and we'll share them out on the Thursday update. And then tell us what's going on. Share all the good stuff. Um, we wanna know what's going on in your program. Um, you know, I was on main calling this morning. Um, I am going to meet with the superintendents on Thursday. Um, I really want to tell them what's going on in the schools. But I need to know, you guys need to tell me so that I need to, so that I can tout all the great stuff that's going on out there. So if you have something good coming up, um, please send me an email, let me know what's going on. Um, I'd love to come to different districts now that I've gotten my feet wet um, and come and see what you're doing um, and really share it. Um, we're gonna try and figure out some way for us to easily post this on the website, but for now, just send me a quick email, let me know what's going on, if you have any something exciting going on in your school that I could come visit or we could talk about with these great partners that we have. So just a few things that I've uncovered along the way that I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about. Um, new from SNA came out the SNA Associates Advocacy Toolkit. I thought that this would be great while it's developed to go to Washington and talk to the senators and, and um, representatives down in Washington. I think it would be a great way, a great toolkit for, to talk to your local senators and representatives. Um, we need to do a lot of talking. We need to tell them how important no charge meals is. And we need to let them know what's going on in their districts. And you guys, the only ones that know. I encourage you to talk about what's going on. Talk about the fact that the stigma is getting less and less with the more kids that are participating in school lunch. How great it is to do breakfast in the hallway or breakfast in the classroom and have all this increased participation in your programs. Um, so if you need some ideas, thoughts, um, check out this toolkit. USDA has also come out with this new whole grain resource. So it's a great guide for you guys um, to help you figure out your grains um, and your crediting for those grains that you haven't used before or are interested in. Also worth the read was the White House Conference on Health, Hunger, and Nutrition. Um, they have really placed in the emphasis on a path to universal meals. Um, and some, uh, Secretary Vilsack also said that when he was here. Um, talking about no charge meals in Maine um, and how excited he was that that was going on here. Um, the first pillar is about nutrition and it's about that pathway to universal meals. I don't think we'll see it come <coughs> very soon, um, but I'm hoping within the next five years, but um, he is looking for a pathway and he, people are watching what we're doing here in Maine. So really check it out, even if it's skimming on the website, um, it's the um, Biden White House Conference on Hunger. So check it out if you have some time to do a little reading. Couple of reminders, um, enrollment information is included as part of your October claim. Um, so make sure that you have that um, for when you go to do your claim next week. Ver it's verification season. So <clears throat> make sure you have your verifications in process. Everybody should be in process by now. Um, and that information is due into CMP web um, by November 20th. 
don't be late. Um, and if you're interested in getting into CACFP um, for October, you have to get your claim done by the 31st. So in, in order to get reimbursed, you have to have that claim in by the 31st. All right. So that's just a few reminders for today. Oh, no, now you've got a sneak peek. That wasn't fair. All right. So Full Plates, Full Potential is doing a big thing this week um, about no charge meals. Um, and it's really a great way for us to share what's going on in the schools. So I encourage you to check out their website, check out their toolkit. And this, what I'm calling a placemat, it's not really a placemat, but it's a piece of paper. Um, schools meals matter to me. Um, so I want to challenge you to print this, fill it out, and then take a picture. So this was the DOE team at the Fall Info Conference. Um, Kate's message said, every student is ready to learn every day with nutritious meals as part of their school day. And we're really proud of that here at the state. So what's your message? What are you gonna tell everybody? So I challenge you to do with this, staff, this with your staff. It could be one, it could be two, it could be you alone. Take it out front, take it by the sign at your school, take it with a tray um, and tell them what great things we're doing here in Maine. Um, and I really don't know why David is being shy in the back like that, but I got him in the picture. That was the big thing. All right. So thank you very much. I don't know how much of your day you got back because I was talked fast, half of it. Oh, I have a question. You do. Somebody really wants to ask me a question. When what? will we, when, I'll try this again. When will we receive the second round of SCA funds? SCA funds um, should be coming um, by Thanksgiving. That's the goal we're trying to set. We're trying to get them out to you by Thanksgiving. Anybody else have any questions? Has everybody put their name of their district into the Q&A box? If they've gotten a higher participation rate this year than last year? That's about it. All right. That's about it, I guess. All right. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. Stay dry um, and email us with any questions or concerns that you have. Thank you so much and have a good one. Bye.